right, folks, uh, why don't we get started and welcome to the uh, May 2nd meeting of the planning board. It's a Wednesday night, which is a little odd for uh, in terms of night, meeting nights, but nevertheless, we're here. Um, the first item on the agenda, uh, we are a board of seven, but only have five members. Uh, we were hoping at the election that uh, someone would have staged some type of a write-in, uh, but that didn't happen. Uh, so the way the process works, if there is a vacancy on the elected board, uh, the remaining members of this, this board meet with the Board of Selectmen, and we collectively uh, appoint members. But in order to do that, we have to have people who are interested, uh, so that I would urge anyone who is interested in serving on the planning board, it's generally two nights per month, uh, ordinarily Tuesday, Tabitha does a great job of getting you information. Uh, there are no preconceived requirements other than being open-minded uh, and have some uh, some desire to have an impact on uh, what gets permitted and, and, and doesn't in the town of North. Um, you, know, you don't need any formal training. I think I speak for all of us that we're fairly congenial. No one's going to bite your head off if uh, you. Uh, express a, an opinion. Um, we've all had varying points and that's why it's a, it's a member, it's a seven member board because we don't speak with one voice. So if there is anyone out there who is interested, uh, send a, a quick note or uh, perhaps email to uh, uh, either the selectman's office or the planning uh, board. Uh, the, the physical address is 70 East Main Street if you want to uh, mail a letter or uh, Norton ma.org slash planning dash economic dash development. We'll get an email uh, to Tabitha. Again, just expressing hopefully your interest, a little bit about you, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch in, in setting up a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen and uh, hopefully make a, a couple of appointments. You would serve for a, a year, in which case, uh, if it's something you want to see through, you would then run for the balance of the term. There's a, I guess now, there's a three-year term. I guess they'd both be. Well, one's a one-year term, and then there's a three-year term, yeah. right? It's right. a three-year term and a one-year term, but you'd have to run for election so that when, if you wanted to continue on, once you run, you'd be running for the balance of the three-year term, <coughs> i.e. two years, or a fresh new three-year term. Uh, so it's a one-year commitment in terms of a trial, uh, if uh, if you ultimately feel it's not for you, you've only committed a year, hopefully it is something that you're interested in. But again, that's all uh, moved if we don't get someone who's uh, at least expressing interest from the outset. Um, so that's that's it for uh, the board vacancies. Uh, now, just real quick, Joe, there, there were some write-ins? Um, there were a total of uh, eight or nine yeah. write-ins. However, no one got, well, actually, one person got one vote in the three-year term and, and the one-year term, but that doesn't count. And again, without making any judgments on, on those people who got write-ins, my sense is they didn't write themselves then. Um, if someone, can, uh, Tim or someone made the, the point that maybe it was a spouse looking to get the, the other spouse out of the house a couple nights a week, but, um, <laughs> My sense is that wasn't an expression of interest. Someone either just nominated a neighbor or whatever. Um, have no way of knowing, but uh, where there was uh, no one with more than one vote, they, they all uh, canceled one for the road. So okay. again, if someone's interested, just let us know and we'd love to talk to you. And hopefully, you have to join us. And I'll also be posting the social media to the account, so uh, just via a submit letter. Tabitha, update on Leonard Street. I'm sorry. You're not reloading. Oh, it's well, it's not on the agenda. Uh, but I didn't know if that was part of it. Okay. Uh, ordinarily, you know, you were, uh, and I. Um, 
tried to make it obvious when I said I'd do this for a year that it would just be a year. Um, so I'm hoping someone is interested in stepping up this chair. Uh, in fairness, I don't have a problem uh, waiting until we have a couple members or um, after town meeting or tonight. It really doesn't matter to me. Again, the town meeting is coming up. I'd be glad to address that, or if someone wants to, if you, if folks want to reorganize tonight, if you're comfortable staying on, I looked at the table until we increase the number of seven, okay. or at least have the opportunity to try it. So, okay. as long as you're comfortable. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that will work. Um, touching on Leonard Street, so I believe the board should be aware, but just for public listening at home, the draft environmental impact report came out for the Leonard Street um, North Business Park development. We call it Leonard Street because it is on Leonard Street at 23. I did issue a letter from the town, uh, which I've included in all of the packets, and is also put on the, um, in the drop box. So under B, um, after my update there is a letter attached to secretary matt Beaton that outlines some of the issues that we still find with the plan notably there is a good amount that they've done to limit the trips of um, cars and trucks that would be coming in and out of the property they're, they're proposing what they call a trip demand management system which would be to have um, a person that, that would be sort of the chief in charge of making sure people were carpooling, ride sharing, um, bike sharing, um, accessing those kind of, stuff, you know, showers and things like that. So it's, it's potential to promote reduction in trips. So that was beneficial to see that potential change with the last iteration. Um, you also see that the sanitary sewer connection was shown in this iteration. So that would connect the complex of 861,000 and change square feet to the MFN sewer trunk line. Um, there's also, we had some comments on um, looking into asking them to do more of a recycling management um, system. So these, these are the things we've asked early up front while we're in the design phase. It's a very early and schematic design, hoping that they will incorporate it into the project. They seem to be very responsive so far, and rather than go through the eight-plus page letter, um, I'd just be happy to answer any questions anyone has. The documents, I'm keeping it all in a binder, and anyone at home who wants to see the plans, the written explanations, or the responses and letters that I've issued come into the office and submit That's Leonard Street. There's still a potential joint listening session with right. some conservation on the horizon. Yeah, I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't assume that that is not going to happen. At this point, it's just delayed. Because of the NEPA process, this, this state review takes quite a long time. And I think they were being very ambitious, thinking that they were going to have shovels in the ground this summer. We have quite a bit of planning that still needs to be done. So the, um, the wetlands boundary has been submitted to conservation. I know that they looked at the camera. The proposal on the table is still that we want them to come in and do a joint session with both of our boards. I talked to my units today and he hasn't heard anything from Condine right now. I think they're still responding to comments. They're probably right now um, reading everything that they've got on the 20th because it's not my own letter, but there's also letters from the state and other government agencies for them to respond to. So. I'll keep you posted. Um, and then just to go through my update, the couple page update that I usually give you guys, Village Center Vision Plan, that is going right along. We're setting up a stakeholders group, Tim is on that stakeholders group, and their first conference call will be coming up shortly. You'll get an email about that soon, Tim. Um, and that will be kicking off the project. The stakeholders group will be consisting of a member of the planning board, board selectmen, highway, GATRA, uh, SERPED, historic commission and some other interested representative parties. And so they will be meeting by conference call monthly to push the project along and then there will be public 
meetings interspersed throughout, throughout that. So the first public meeting to really kick off the project and introduce what it is and where it's going is going to be in June. Complete streets, um, that's still moving right along and will be distributed for comment prior to the next public meeting in late May. The road projects have been moving right along just the same as last uh, update that I gave you, so I won't go over them too Tim, much. Uh, I'm sorry for complete streets. Is there a meeting date already set? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Just late May. Um, the next major meeting on roadway projects is tomorrow night at the high school. There's actually going to be a project initiation public meeting for the North and South Worcester Street realignment. Um, it's not expected to be that great a meeting. It's just we were running out of meeting spaces, <laughs> so we're meeting at the high school. Um, and then GIS map edits, those are moving too. I made some revisions back and forth. So marked the map to surf head, and they're hoping to get me back something. So hopefully we'll see some feedback <clears throat> on that. While I think about it, we the Finance Committee, uh, someone made the point of, uh, we were discussing the uh, the uh, marijuana uh, bylaws, wanting to know where the, the commercial, uh, the industrial zones were. Um, if, if we can have uh, some type of uh, visual that shows exactly where the commercial, yes. the commercial the industrial. industrial. Uh, areas are so that uh, folks know how they are going to affect their income. Absolutely. I included it in the planning board report to uh, town meeting, and then I'll put it okay. in the slide for town meeting on behalf of that that shows the industrial zones. Uh, construction updates, those are pretty much the same. With nothing much has moved because of the snow, and now it's starting to get underway, but uh, there's a lot of drainage installations going around, going on around town uh, with the construction projects we have now. Well, Alan Island is here tonight to talk about a science modification and Lopes Drive. Uh, they're just getting started finally on their construction inspections. Some things coming up on the horizon. Um, we've talked about Leonard already. We're talking about Outpost Farms tonight. That's on Dean Street. Wheaton College is here tonight as well. Cumberland Farms is looking to go in at the bank property. So that's potential. Bank of America. Yeah. Yeah. Farm, so cross my fingers now. Um, not that I'm biased, no. <laughs> I'd like to see a tent. Um, and then House of Bread Church, Bog Iron Beer, and Bernie and Phil's are all seeking to expand. We've been you know, having these kind of conversations with them. So some other planning news. Uh, I'm hoping to just send out another survey, like last year, on logistics. To make sure we're on track with what everybody likes to see happen. I don't think we're going to have time or energy I think, to have an annual meeting like last year, but um, I think if we just touch base that way. And then some other things, I'm attending the Chapel 40 B conference this Friday, which will be good training, and I'll to bring back some good information from that on 40 B and housing. And annual town meeting is coming up May 14th on Monday, and the Mass Planning Directors Conference Also, we are looking for a zoning coordinator and a clerk position as of the FinCom conversation has a couple, couple weeks ago, um, given hoping that town meeting approves, we'll be looking for two positions, so stay tuned. We're also looking for a and Kaylee, our recording secretary, um, will not be able to be with us any longer. No. So she is recording from home tonight. And she's going to help. Hi, Kaylee. <laughs> um, she's going to help out in the meantime, but we will be looking for another point. Thank you. Hi. Why don't we skip the address of the internal stuff? And uh, is there someone here from uh, Home Island is on the uh, sign modification? Well, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I, I thought we were done with. We, we, we've got someone from Wheaton uh, that uh, will give us an update on the proposed dorm construction. Yes. You want us to do it away from you? Yeah. Wherever, uh, although, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we're looking at it. Yeah, we'll up to the other side. Yeah. Or, I'm just looking at the way it gets well, set. If you want to set right, right over here so the camera can pick you up. Start with the show. Be 
either of you a Norton residence and you want to be on the planning board and light shows. <laughs> he, was to, he was trying to talk me though. Yeah, I'm not a Norton resident. No, no, no. I'll introduce myself. Um, first of all, thank you for inviting us. I'm John Sullivan. I'm the ABP for Business and Physical Plan for Wheaton College. And the company me is Jacob Dignibottom. He's the Director of Higher Ed and our Principal Architect on the project. That's uh, so what we'll be showing you today. I'll give you a quick overview and then I'll turn it over to Jacob to kind of talk more about the details of the hall itself. Um, for those of you who joined us in the fall, um, just to kind of rehash some of the things about the residence hall, it's a 178 bed hall. Uh, about 45,000 square feet located in the lower camp, what we call lower campus on in, on our, on our um, campus grounds. Situated between our young McIntyre Clark residence hall and, and Meadows just off of Pine Street. Um, in the, the couple of quick points about the hall, um, which I'll have Jacob talk a little more about in a second, is that this building is going to be super ultra energy efficient. It's going to be what we call passive house rated. Um, so it'll, it'll in, in the end, when it's all fully done and completed and we've commissioned it, um, it'll only use about 30% of the power of a typically uh, built building to code today. Um, so very, very efficient. There'll be solar panels on the roof. Um, the building envelope is super tight, and again, you can get into that a little bit more as we talk about that. Um, at the current time, where uh, we finished design uh, documents, we're at 60% of construction document phase. Uh, we've released our um, some of the lawn lead items, such as uh, windows and steel and foundation work, so that we can keep that ahead. You know, obviously, the amount of time it takes to get those going is considerable. Um, we're working on inter interior materials review, and um, also our mechanical engineering and plumbing um, review is underway as well. The, uh, we filed our SWIP and NOI for the project. Um, we'll be with CONCOM on that um, to continue to modify that to meet their needs. Um, with a, and we have a target date of May 25th to finish our construction document package, um, get our building permit in, and then we'll um, begin actual construction. Preceding that will be um, our taking down of 579 Street, which is a small residential house we use for student housing, situated on the site. And earlier this year, January, February, we advertised to give the house away, basically sell it for a dollar. We only had two uh, people who were interested and came and take a tour and walk through the building and it was just, it wasn't what they, what they were looking for. It was too complicated to, to, to relocate, uh, highly because of the age and just how the structure was. Um, so as a result of that, we will be demolishing the building. That'll take place right after our commencement reunion activities. So starting May 21st, we'll do a salvage operation for roughly two or three days. We'll cut the utilities targeting around May 23rd and then demo the building right after that. Um, Following that, we'll be doing site mobilization with our, with our contractor. Right now, that looks to be Commodore Builders, but we still have to go through a um, competitive bidding process with them. Um, and they will mobilize on June 4th, and that's when we'll start construction. So that's kind of the Reader's Digest version of, of kind of where we had a timeline. Like. I'll turn it over to Jay to talk more about some of the physical aspects of the building, and then we both can take questions and do whatever All right. <clears throat> Great. Thanks, John. Um, I don't have a ton more to add. John did a very succinct <laughs> summary of, of everything that we've been working on. But um, in addition to the, the other meetings that John mentioned, we have met with, uh, with the local fire department uh, for their cursory review of the site plan, uh, fire truck access, and the like. Um, some other statistics about the building. It's a three-story building primarily, although it follows the topography and the goes up to a three, a four story portion at the lower end of the campus. Um, I don't know if y'all can see this very well. It looks like there's some handouts circulating, uh, which looks like similar materials, although some of it might have changed a little bit. All of this is It looks relatively uh, current. Uh, the building, as John had mentioned, is, is designed to seek what's called passive house certification, which is a, um, has the an acronym FIUS, P-H-I-U-S, Passive House Institute of the U.S. It's a program that was adopted um, nationally from a, a program started in Germany um, to help promote uh, lower energy consumption in, in the built environment, uh, more responsible living. And it's been attracted to Wheaton because uh, because of their lower operating costs in the long run, and it also provides an attractive living environment for students that are seeking um, you know, to uh, 
live in a lower carbon footprint environment. Uh, third, gaining popularity with Wheaton students. Um, and we can see some of that asterisk that I've got in this. So this is a, a nice amenity for the school to offer their incoming students. Um, the, let's see, come back to this. But the, the building is um, designed, actually we brought a, board that shows a little bit of the history of uh, a little bit of the history of, of uh, the lower campus. Yeah, I can just hold it. Yeah, I can just hold it. This shows a little bit of the history of lower campus, but the, the lower campus buildings are um, Unlike upper campus, they're designed in um, uh, almost uh, international style, modern solution that was popular circa 1950 when they were built. Um, not, not hugely beloved by everyone, but it does set a context for us that we're working within. So we're kind of striking a balance between lower campus, which is built with these um, more modernist bar, bar type buildings and upper campus which is primarily historic brick, um, mansard roofs, slate. Um, and what, we, what we're proposing I think strikes a balance between the two. Um, this shows some vantage points of the building from different parts of the campus but um, and this brick actually looks because of the computer rendering software, a lot more red. They like red. It looks a lot more red in this image. So it, we've actually picked a brick that matches uh, a lot of buildings on upper campus. So it looks a lot more traditional. Um, so you're welcome to come up and look at these a little bit closer. It's hard to see from there, but um, this vantage point is uh, from the quadrangle, which uh, this building kind of forms the last in a series of buildings to complete the quadrangle of lower campus res halls. Um, so we face the building towards this green area, which will serve as a gathering space for um, primarily first year students. So, so one, of, one, of the, one of the themes for this house is not only to uh, promote sustainability, hence the bias certification, but also within this green space, as, as Jake was indicating, YMC would be over here, Meadows is right here. Um, by connecting that into a uh, experience that allows that green space there now to become a, a more of a focal point for our lower campus for both connecting, collaborating, um, entertainment, kind of that whole um, um, co-curricular activity that you'd want lower campus. Right now, a lot of our students are lower campus. They all migrate to upper campus to where we call to our main quad, we call the Dimple, because that seems to be the hangout area traditionally. Well, this is, we kind of recreates that, even with, with, with a, I know Jake was talking about this, even with a slide, uh, which is a pass through in the building to get to a Pine Street. We've got one similar in upper campus that passes through to Howard, to Howard Street, so it literally creates kind of a, a window to the world of Wheaton through both sides. And with this collaboration space, it'll give us the opportunity to not only have entertainment for the students to hang out, the, this, and I'll let Jacob talk about, about this large common area space we created here. Um, it's a little bit better in a minute. Um, that is good. The entire building is going to be card access, so it's from true security. But we can also, through card access, allow all the students on campus to come and enter this building without getting into the main residence hall. And so they can go in there. They'll meet in small groups, meet in large groups, we can do presentations, they can, the student government can meet in there, the athletics groups can meet in there. They can do everything from hot yoga to, you know, talking about student government activities. So it literally is a great collaboration space for the students, um, and it really ties this whole quad together kind of in a unified way. So that was kind of the whole design concept that SGA was very creative in helping us come up with. John covered everything. <laughs> no, very well said. Um, I think part of the reason it's exciting to present with John is that this, this school is very excited about this. It's a relatively simple looking building, but John mentioned this underpass here, which it does mimic 
um, the one on upper campus uh, and creates a new front door on Pine Street for the institution uh, or you know not maybe a secondary um, door I would call it the front door but this shows kind of that pass through we've lifted the building up to about 15 foot floor to floor so you can get a generous walk in a safe environment from the quadrangle to Pine Street um, and if you hang a left here on Main Street and this corner element is kind of floating with the uh, common space and the college is still looking at ways to program that and I don't want to speak for them but I could imagine there could be community events in there as well um, and actually, that's a good point. So part of the reason we designed this pass-through as well was feedback from the town. We, you know, we met pretty pretty consistently with different members of the town, from the historic commission right through the building inspector and so forth. And some of the feedback we got was that there's a lot of pedestrians who frequent the campus, right? It's a great place to walk. It's you feel safe. It's all those things. But in order to get into the main campus, you kind of do an end around either through Fillmore Drive or up 123, then you circle on the main campus. And it wasn't a great access through Pine Street, but by creating the turnaround and this access, this, uh, by having to get into the main campus. So by having a pedestrian way that you can now enter, enter the main campus, it opened up greater use for the community to enter the campus and be part of our community as well. Um, so it was, a, it was a great way to tie some natural landscape elements of the school into some requirements that the town, not requirements, just desires that the town was looking for. So it was a good meld of both, of both, both needs. Might be a good time to open up the questions. The, the additional materials in addition to the brick um, on, on the Pine Street side, as you enter, there's a base of, of stone that we're selecting. Currently, we're not looking for the exact specific kind of stone that we'll be using, but we're talking about going to the local quarry. Um, and uh, this center element is, uh, is, is glazed with curtain wall solution. Underneath this pass through, there's a um, wood ceiling uh, to create warmth and allude to the fact that the building is sustainable and natural in the environment. Um, and as I mentioned before, as it cascades down the hill here, you, we tucked in another level of, of dorm rooms. They're primarily singles and doubles, actually about 80% doubles, 20% singles. What's the capacity of the hall? Um, 178 students. Are you guys seeing um, an increase in enrollment, or um, are you guys maxed out right now with so residence hall space? So yes, I'll leave it, <laughs> which is a good thing. So part of our plan at the school is to grow um, by small portions each year, um, roughly 30 to 40 students. Um, all schools right now are facing a challenge when it comes to enrollment, so there's much more competition when it comes to that. But our goal is to, is to grow the college. What this building does capacity-wise with 178, about 50 of that space is um, replacement for housing that we be either, either overcrowded in or we're taking down like 575. That goes away. We've got student housing that like, you need to replace that number of beds. So uh, between that and then trying to eliminate some of the overcrowding issues on campus, um, that monthly represents about 50 beds within the cell. The other 125 or 128 are growth um, to try to take on additional capacity. Um, previously, our, our uh, incoming first year class, freshman class, um, was typically below 500 level. Our target goal right now is 500 each year. So we'll eventually get to a point where we might be between 1,800 and 2,000 students on campus. Um, this starts to give us some of the housing capacity to get there. Currently, we're at, we're at, we're at full capacity. So if we go to, this, will, this building will be finished in the summer of 19, but I think July of 19. Without this building, we won't have enough housing to house the students in that coming September. What's the enrollment this year? Um, so we're, um, it includes just students who study abroad away around the mid 1600s. How many students live in residence halls versus off campus? Versus so, campus? literally like 98% of our yeah. students were residential campus, so less yeah, than 1% so commute. Right now we've got roughly about 50 students, a little bit less than that than that commute. Um, so in the fall we're extremely crowded 
typically in the spring there's a pressure relief as students go away for you know through the year abroad and um, participate different internships and so forth. So the spring is less pressure than the fall, but the fall is certainly yes. less tight. The building Yes. So so well, well, it's a little bit taller. Um, I don't know exactly how it's top of my head, but. Young and McIntyre and, um, and Meadows were built with a much different HVAC system, so their floor to floor made it really, really small. In fact, it's like under nine feet, which is impossible to build today. Um, and get in the, the infrastructure that we need to properly ventilate the building. So our floor to floor is about 10 feet. So ultimately we get almost a foot and a half more per floor. So overall, this building, if you multiply that by three, you're at about four and a half feet taller than um, John and Mac there. I think the parapet at this point, got us. this is a little bit of a higher, so we're actually around 40 feet. And the topography there oh. is it because it's really hill, so that's a high point. And then the way that the building is situated is it's, it's really four floors on one side and three on the other. By the way, the topography goes, so we've got what we call a garden level, um, and that so we're kind of building into the hill is really what we're trying to do. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I don't in fact, in fact, I'm going to just say to, to reemphasize what the on the fire safety end of things. One of the things we did when we met with the fire department was to make sure that um, not only do they have fire access off of Fillmore Drive to get in to get in to get in front of the hall, but they can, we also create an access road along the rear, so they can literally pull in with their fire truck through this circle and get along the back side of this building. Um, so they'll have full full access to that. We'll have knock boxes on the gates and on the building, so yeah, there's no issues with any of that. So we, we actually talked to them quite a bit about that, making sure that they could fit their ladder trucks in there. And, do you ever walk in picture uh, with the lighting under that uh, walk? The lighting on the building itself, my concern would be spill over to Pine Street. I, obviously that has to be well lit, but um, I assume it's going to be done in such a way where it's just down lighting. Is there any other lighting on the front of the building or any exterior lighting? So we, um, well, and Jacob talked about this. We're trying hard to be dark, dark design so that we're not, you know, lighting this up like a Christmas tree. Um, there'll be some bottle of lighting, there'll be some lighting poles, but nothing in the sense of matching the architecture and the other stuff that goes around the main campus. Um, so we are adding some lights, but not dramatic to that point. And also to help shade on Pine Street, we're trying to maintain as many of the current um, trees and, and, and natural growth as, as we can on the, like that rock ledge front going toward that. Um, and there's a pine grove to, on the southern side that'll be behind the storm basin. And we're gonna try to maintain that as much as we can. Um, but, but if it comes down to, you know, that is intruded on upon too much, then we'll, we'll end up planting trees and so forth to help screen some of that. Um, it'll take time for that to grow, but yeah, we, we do plan to add some natural growth to that. Uh, well, in terms of the lighting design, there's, on the Pine Street side, there's no plans for the pole mounted fixtures. There are pole mounted fixtures on the quad triangle side that match the existing ones. Um, yeah, those have been removed in lieu of uh, in favor of lower bollards that are all have down light components. Pedestrian style. Yeah. You know, light up the walkway. Type so I don't I don't envision this building being very bright at night, especially from the Pine Street side. Uh, it faces a residential neighborhood across the street compatible with that. You'll have student you know, lights in their rooms, and then uh, this pass-through will have light that passes downward on the right yeah. surface. Okay. Again, that, that picture here almost looks like the two on a row of fluorescent tubes as opposed to being confused. Just, uh, it's, it's going to be all LED lighting. They'll all be on sensors and so forth. So, although, it just have kind of the power of the brick. It looks brighter than it is. I think this is a little bit of a computer. Is it going to be 24-7 on, or is there actually... That, that wouldn't be the plan of the school, because, it's because again, the building is Passive House certified. Right. Um, 
everything you'll have will, you know, sensors on it and so forth. So, um, there'll so be some, some, gonna go on some Well, again, we haven't, we haven't finalized all those lighting details yet, but within the building itself, like you think about the glass stair walls or any of the stair walls or anything, I mean, you, get, you, you have to have sensors, otherwise you're, you're just burning electricity for no reason, and we would, and it, would it would jeopardize the, the certification for fires. Um, so, we're certainly conscious of that. Some of this exterior security-wise, there'll be some lighting in here that'll probably be 24 seven just for safety. Just like the back with the back fire road. You know, if you didn't like that, that could be kind of a safety issue for students who transit that to go back and forth to the athletic fields. And especially if you retain the pine grove, you don't want to create a place where it's perfect for, for a predatory, you know, person. Um, so there will be some lighting in that, but again, it's not going to be, the plan is not to light this up like a Christmas tree at all. Um, and so we're trying to be very conservative in that and balance safety, security, task lighting with, you know, the needs of the surrounding community as well. Um, we haven't fully designed the lighting either, so there's opportunities for input from that. And the distance of this building from the street is much further than it, than it looks. What is we're looking at it? Some of the questions they asked for us, how far the, uh, this end of the building was going to be from like 123 to something like 240 feet. Um, and if, if you think about where the building is being built, we're taking down 575. The edge of our building is actually quite a ways off that street as well, so trying to be very conscious about that. What is the distance from the street? It's about um, 70 feet. So the front of the front of the building that you're seeing on this edge, which faces Pine Street, is actually behind the back of the current 575. Uh, these renderings are kind of even floating above the, the grass, so it looks closer. But it's not from the street; it's from closer than the street. Yeah. Yep. There's a scale in this drawing from this location. Uh, here about 65 or 70 feet away from Pine Street, here. And I think some of the lighting issues can be mitigated by the planting that we're proposing. Um, there's, been a, there's been a conscious effort working with the Historic District Commission uh, as well to, because they were sensitive about losing this building. Five Seven Pine Street. So we've been talking with them about buffering this and, and illustrating some of this components that are a little bit more traditional in terms of the, the stone and the brick and these elements. I think our goal has been to give glimpses of the building as you walk down Pine Street, but not have it be front and center. So, yeah, so, the, so it would be uh, basically across from Fillmore to the right. Oh, it's for open. Yeah, so it's yeah. further down. So it would be east of Fillmore. So Fillmore, so, it's, so the, the, site, the cemetery would be out this way. The yellow house that's, okay, so it's would right. be like, yeah, it would be closer to it. Okay. east of Fillmore, so it's not Yes. Okay. So you'd have, um, so like, so on this side, you'll have a handful of houses along Pine Street. Yeah, I've got that, this, this three that are student owned. And then we're in the process of, of um, negotiating to buy the Pinecroft school back from the current owner of that. Um, but then everything else is all kind of like it. All parking lots. Any other questions from the audience? Just for the benefit of everyone. They, the region doesn't have to come to us for any permitting. They're exempt as an educational facility. So this type of informational uh, session is just something that you, you want to try to influence. We try to be, um, as you mentioned, as upfront as we can. We had actually met in the fall and showed a lot of the town officials yet the early on plans to try to get ahead of some of the uh, needs they would have either from, from the you know, fire department side, building inspector side, so for HDC, um, with the hopes of incorporating as much as we can. Um, we can't be everything to everybody, but it's a, but I think this is a, a good building that's um, meeting the needs of both both the Norton community and the Wheaton community. So it's a good good mix of ideas and, and input. Thank you.
think it would be nice to see once you finalize the lighting plan. Um, so just have uh, some visibility into what that would be. Um, I don't know what you're forecasting in terms of when that might be available or completed. Um, soon. <laughs> <laughs> Within a few weeks. We, we're actually pushing towards 100% construction documents before the end of that. So we're uh, full steam ahead. But there, we haven't selected the lighting pictures in any of this area yet. So I think as we talk about the building controls and the types of fixtures, um, we should be sensitive to, to how that is viewed from the street. Um, I think we're happy to share it in whatever format people would like to see it. Uh, we're sort of done with our design and rendering, so we won't be yeah, we can definitely yeah. do that. Yeah, anything. Right, yeah, description of what it is, quantity, you know, um, wattage, furniture, you know, yeah, the basic information. Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, if working with Tabitha, it's fine. You know, yeah, I'll get it. Yeah. 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 yeah, the building is designed to be 100% LED lighting, which doesn't affect the light storage, but it does. There's lots of different temperature colors. We're going to try it out within the 3000 range to keep okay. the lighter and a warmer so, uh, color. Because uh, LED in the past has had a bad reputation for being glaring and bright and white. And I think in the last two years, there's been a lot more color options. So we can go towards more of a residential and incandescent feel, which I think will help a lot. There's something very jarring. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Area. 
Uh, we feel like the size that we're proposing, which is what you see, is more proportionally accurate to the to the scale. Is this a lit sign? Uh, yeah, it will be yeah. backlit. Backlit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they call it the uh, halo lighting. So 28 and a quarter inch. Which one of those feet? 28 feet. 28 feet. Yeah. 28 feet. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, just, just because it's no snow. Thank you for your time. Larry Tilton, Tilton Associates. Anyone who will be going by the phone. I'm speaking on behalf of the applicants and the owners here. The project that we are proposing to bring to the town. And thank you very much for your time and effort. I really, before I really get into it, I've got to commend the board for having a pre-application process. Uh, it has been very, very helpful in this project. Uh, I can show you a few things. I realize this is just a workshop. It's not a formal it's been filed. So uh, we're going to kind of get the high points and go through. But I really have to commend you on the pre-application process and how much effort that goes into it from all your departments that we've sat with and tried to incorporate them, their ideas and what we finally have settled on bringing forward and it has saved tremendous time and money. And as you know, some of these projects can get very expensive in the process and then we get into the ninth hour and something is overlooked or there's something going in the wrong direction and we just spent a lot of time together. And then we're into repeal situations and they're all this time. So again, thank you very much for that. The track of land is on, on Dean Street and it's just kind of south of West Hodges Street. It's a, for all intents and purposes, 16.9 or 17 acre land. It's relatively flat in nature. Years ago, they must have subdivided off for four days. And the and that's the front lots that have been built on and built on. This is an R80 zone now. And as I mentioned, the land is relatively flat. It's kind of broken up into two sections. The rearmost portion is a resource area. It's been delineated on the ground, but it has not been formally traveled or officially to establish the line. This is what it has done. The front portion is the upland area and the area that we're going to propose to come forward with. And I know we're setting up a plan that is our final thought to bring it in, but I just kind of wonder if we can change the process. If we were to put a standard, and I'm going to hit this real quick. Uh, if we were to put a standard subdivision in here, we'd be allowed to put four lots. Because of, it was left years ago, two openings to go out, they obviously plan to either connect these roads or come in and make a different configuration. But because regulations have changed over the years, setbacks, now mobile, wetlands, some of the older plans, and I'm seeing it not just here, but a lot of towns, this real land that was remaining um, isn't quite being able to be developed the way it was originally proposed. So if, but if we were to come in with two roads about 350 to 400 feet in length, we could actually subdivide off four lots, single family, 80,000 and couple of Really not wishing to do that uh, because the owners are they're getting on in age, they're looking to capitalize the best return on their investment. Yeah. So what we were, we were thinking about doing is asking for waivers and kind of more, and your bylaw really doesn't allow it, but we can ask for it. And if we were to maximize go for the world, that we could actually get six lots in here and build, but we would have to ask for waivers and variances. And through the process I mentioned earlier, that was kind of strongly recommended not to do. Because we're working with the Conservation Commission and all your other departments, um, it's kind of too much in the smaller packets. We aren't great. But if we were looking to do that, we were looking to put duplexes on these lots, it would be 12 units in size in the area. Again, it would ask for waivers and the special permit process. So let's just scrap that idea and walk on. Um, then we came back with a four lot. This, the subdivision process would allow four lots, so we could put four lots in there and still go with the duplex because we are going to file under a cluster design and the two families are allowed under cluster. 
course, with a special permit. And have the two roads, long driveways, two boxes, two car garages, townhouse design, pretty much what we've seen in other places. Some of the issues with the conservation areas in the back is there is a potential vernal pool in here. It was kind of discouraged not to get closer to the vernal pool, kind of, in, and try to bring in the parameters of the site and see what we could do. So here, as we went to a lot, about 200 plus, 250 feet of road level. Change the duplexes. Did you remember the long driveways around single? Kind of double up on the driveways, come into the center to the two car garages and put the units on the, on the end and be able to pull the 40,000 plus square feet that we have to dedicate to each area or each total building allowing us to pull further away from the rural pool, allowing us to stay out of the buffer zones with the majority of the site construction. These sites, these buildings will have on-site septics. The soils are generally in the A, but there's a high groundwater, so it is going to require fill in the area and working in that direction. And working with your water department, the Tony Water and Dean Street, they are going to require us to fill it. So what I'm going to say, working with water department, the conservation commission, the zoning, the building inspector, um, suggestions have been made to short the road, loop the water, so the fire protection is there. Um, we're going to go with LA LED type, low impact type development, so recharge and the drainage. If these roads are shorter, we'll be just bringing them back in. As I mentioned, there is fill involved. We'll come into a catch base, it will be infiltration, grass swale type design. Outside the no disturbance zone for the resource area, but in, partly in the 100 foot bubble, the development you see is all outside of the uh, water, sewer, and electric, and you know, on site site things are proposed to do infiltration as much as possible. The owner's son does own one of these lots, and this is, that's this lot right here. Because we're over the required zone, we're proposing to cut off pre-application, I would say, a lot of approximately about an acre in size, and we're gonna combine it with his lot. He's going through renovations in his lot, and wants to do got an on-site septic system to do. So we are going to ask to combine that with that front So when you see the actual preliminary definitive layout, it will be more like this. It seems to be the most favorable layout that we work through pre-application. Uh, the owners in agreement with it. And we have drainage outside, drainage outside, and charge it. So I know that's kind of a work through rough tops hitting just the high points, but uh, without getting into a lot of engineering process, this forum is the best place to give everybody a couple of them to pull the switch and let it, let it go forward. So uh, looking for it. In, ever in put Just to add to that, I wanted to tell the board that they've come in before us several times, as he's mentioned, and so they're ready to file. They wanted to come in as a discussion item they will need to file formally and notice notify all the others and have actual hearing in the second How many photos on the ground? How many photos per other? Well, these are all about us now. And then, of course, this, this is a huge weather. So there would be a few. And it's a it's special permit, so it's a 300, 300 foot radius. So, about us. Yeah, Eight or so along the just the long main street. Just, <laughs> Normal application here in process. What's happening with that piece uh, of upland between the here? Yeah. This dark green, because I mentioned at the beginning, this is the wetland resource area now. Because we are filing in the cluster, we're going to set aside the open space that's required. 
we're proposing that all of this dark green of this plan become the open space for the project with access, kind of dual face access, one being the service road over the proposed line a connection loop and also to the open space. So they have plenty of open space as access passes that are inactive, up resource. So we're proposing this to be the open space that comply with the cluster bylaw requirements. This to be the developed area. So the white green is developed area. This lot was proposing to get removed because they're still comply with the requirements. And we are looking to put duplexes. We do have some photographs. One of the suggestions of the building inspector was before we get through the whole process is to give them some architectural renderings of what they're looking the building may look like for access and access. But right now, this is what we have to do with. Questions from the board? Or That's, uh, the timing, I believe, will lag your filling the board. I don't see that. I don't see that preempting you. Know, so, uh, and if it did happen, we would definitely uh, have to weigh on going forward in the night of the hearing. Okay. Any other questions? No, thanks for the you know, progression that you guys went thank through. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again for all the pre application process. Well, I think you know the other thing is uh, I think this is an example. You end up with a better project. You end up you know, getting bugs out of the way and some of the concerns out of the way. So hopefully, it's a win-win for everyone. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Two minutes. Was it two minutes? Less than two uh, minutes. Minute. 38. Four seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ten times this. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have bills and warrants. Uh, total out of our budget, $3,056. Uh, we have $17,000 out of special uh, revolving <laughs> accounts. Serpent complete streets. Uh, well, how much is the total grant for Serpent? Uh, something like 30,000. Half of it. So we have a total of $20,215.34. 20, Second. Second. Motion to second. second. Discussion? Um, I'm sorry? I guess. Is the. I'm just noticing that we're over budget on a couple of things. Yeah, I left those on there because last year when we created this, when Joe created this great special for us, it was so that we could better track what line we're being overspent. What happens is accounting just pulls it from another line as long as we have an overall total. Um, but as you can see, yeah, printing, we went over education supplies and seminars and conferences. The only distinction is salaries and expenses. Uh, so we can uh, we can't uh, 
be over in salaries and expect to take it out of expenses and vice versa. But as long as the sum of either of those is, uh, is still positive, then we're in good shape. So we've, uh, we're getting tight on uh, expenses and those. So. Very good. Um, and there were some unpaid bills that I talked to Mike about. He said we could take a look at a general update on noticing people that have paid the notice. That's separate. Yeah, I just saw red numbers, but I should say something. Say something Hi, and, the, and the budget <laughs> ends <laughs> when? Next, next week? July. 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 Oh, July. July. So we two months to go. So we have two months to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, July. That week doesn't. Okay, yeah. So from. And the budget is this is your this is total year budget, right? It's total year. I will right. say dues and membership are probably safe not to be using that because those um, came out the last minute last year, so probably we can wait to clean that money oh. how you move around. Because the dues aren't due until July first. Oh okay. No. So okay. Yeah. Okay. But I can bring back a better analysis for you guys next week. Well, that completely. Yeah, as long as the, the 600 dues and membership doesn't have to be paid this year, in other words, it's not a FY18 bill. Not all 600, maybe 300 of it. So we just added another subtotal line for the expense section? Sure. Because it just adds, it kind of adds just it all up. Not. Yeah, just to kind of see what that variance is. Any other questions? The motion and second all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? It's unanimous. Okay. Um, what do we need again? Uh, town meeting of the 14th? Okay. Yeah. I didn't have any other meetings with that, but I just didn't. Uh, there was what, another media. Yeah. There was a meeting was there? scheduled for. I don't think I said anything. Uh, 22nd, 22nd, 22nd. 22nd? Okay. No, I will not be here. The meeting will go from like 6 to 9? 7 to 9. Which one? Town meeting. Oh, town meeting. Oh, well, that's yeah. the annual. I goes, there's, it goes until it goes. So but it's it go 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 6 o'clock, 2 or 7 o'clock. I believe it starts at 7. 7. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. it's, it's going to go to. Never underestimate the power of finishing my mind at lunchtime. I don't know. I think we, are, we should have a call in. <laughs> oh. Well. Not fair. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's about the time, right? yeah, six hours. Six hours. Yeah. So we have a meeting on the 22nd. Yep. Already scheduled. Yep. Um, I'm hesitant to uh, go too far up because I'm hoping that we'll have the other people. I don't think it's filings. That puts us back onto our first and third Tuesdays, June 5th and June 19th. I think we'd uh, schedule like one more maybe makes sense. Because otherwise but, we need to meet because if we get somebody at the top meeting in that day, we get to meet and then point up and that they'd have to so it feels yeah. yeah. So June 5th, June 5th? Yeah. I will not be available June 19th. Well, we'll but, about so, anyway, June, June 19th on June 5th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have two meetings coming up the 22nd and then June 5th. Good. Sounds good. Right. Anything else for tonight? That's it. Thank you, Doug. Is there a motion to adjourn? Take a nice cream sandwich. Adjourn. Oh, thanks. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, there's a second by the two the two speeds. Yeah, two speeds. either way. Either way. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.